nice vinyl behind you. Thank you. A little big sugar. A little big sugar heated. Big sugar. The album is heated. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they just released it a, a few months back, and so it came. All right. And then, then... Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first listen on Welcome to the Music. Double album. Double album. Nice. Let's take a look Other at vinyl. this. Wow, look at that green. So for those people watching on YouTube, you can see it. Uh, if you want to know our YouTube channel, just go to welcometothemusic.com and you'll see all the channels. You can find us on green and, what is that, orange? Yep. Burnt orange. That's nice. Oh, red kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have, like, touch it. You feel it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's got weight. It's got stories. It's art. Yes. Yeah, you're getting more than just... Uh, zeros and ones on a, on a digital playlist yes or digital app here you can touch it you can feel it it's uh, it you know you can hear it obviously yes yeah and then also behind me that's actually on the turntable right now oh two turntables and a microphone rage against the machine rage against the machine renegades Look at you. You've been so, shopping? Uh, this I actually received for my son for Christmas. For Christmas? He got me this for Christmas. Okay. He, we draw we draw names for Christmas. Yeah. And he got me that for Christmas because he knew I didn't have it. And it's basically uh, an entire cover album by that Rage Against the Machine did. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to visit you sometime and uh, borrow that. Yeah, so they did like Kick Out the Jams, MC5, uh, uh, Ghost of Tom Joe, mm. uh, Street Fighting Man by Rolling Stones, Maggie Farm, uh, Renegades of Funk, which is probably the song everybody knows from this album, uh, Rage, that Rage did. Nice. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Now, people are listening to this and going, Greg's family is so big that they have to draw names. Well, I have 17 kids. Se 17 kids? I don't have 17 kids. How many wives? How many what? Wives. How many uh, baby mamas? I have one wife. <laughs> I have one wife. You're, you're insistent on the number of wives you have. But kids, ah! Exactly. 15, 16, 17. Who's counting? Well, fantastic. That is good. I, I should I should get in on this uh family Christmas. Hilson Diamond Feldman family Christmas draw. I what do I what do I get? I get uh MMs, a bag of MMs from Cosmere. Hmm. Um one Christmas I got uh I got uh, Ye I got an album by Yeezy, which I subsequently uh, cashed that in. Mm -hmm. um, you got an album from your son, and you? No, that was that was from uh, uh, Iman. Oh. I think she was playing a joke on me. She gave it to me, and I threw it right back at her. I said, "I don't want to. I don't want this." Huh. Uh, and it was his newer stuff. It wasn't like an old classic. It was like his one of his newer albums, and I yeah I'm not interested. But anyways, yeah, so that's what that's what uh, the children get for this old man. Hmm. Yeah, not not rage. Well, not no. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. It could be anything. You know what I'm saying? It could be like mm -hmm. I I would take a classic pop album. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but yeah, speaking of pop. Yes. How, how was your, uh, your Super Bowl Sunday? Um, I thought, I thought 
Post Malone did an incredible oh job. Oh my god! Oh, of that song. Why I'm I'm I heard that, and again, I he did a Nirvana cover session back in 2020 online. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, from his and. Um, and I'm thinking, like, oh man, if this guy ever just says, "I got enough money, I'm gonna do rock," or like yesterday, I'm gonna do singer songwriter stuff. What a voice! Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. what a voice! Yeah. Great, great rendition of yeah, uh, "Bless America." And um, and I don't know if you've ever heard any of his interviews. Like I, I've I've watched a couple of clips. Uh, with him uh, and Howard Stern. And he is like the most polite gentleman. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Like, just like, oh, it's fantastic. Yep. yep. You know? And in the halftime show? Yeah. Uh, well, I will say Kelly was really impressed. My wife was really impressed. My one wife was really impressed. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was good. For what it was, it was good. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it was, and then, I, don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I was telling somebody today at lunch, I didn't not like it, but yeah. it doesn't like it, it's like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I thought, I mean, for, and, I, and I, I, you know, there seemed to be, there seemed to be mixed reviews on it from like listening to, yeah. you know, on the radio and, and people talking about it. It was like some people absolutely loved it, which is yeah. great. Good. And it's not like, you know what I mean? It's not like I had anything against it. I just, yeah. for me, it was like, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was good. I've, I've learned now. Um, that you're old? No, not, not to be as much of a music snob as I've been in the past. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that as a music snob. Like, again, I'm not, like, I'm not going. I'm not saying you I, have been. I'm saying I won't go there. So Personally to me. <laughs> yeah. Personally to me. You know, I'm not a big fan of the song "God Bless America." I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a big fan of of that. Like, I, to me, it was more country than singer songwriter. But okay, yeah, I can go there, right? But so it's like, you know, as a music snob, I don't necessarily like the rendition, if you will, but I was blown away by the rendition by, of by Post him. Malone yeah, doing absolutely. God Bless America. You know what I mean? Like, that's I hear like, you. So, so a little snobby there, but yet I could, like, you know, I can still, like, it still blew me away. Yeah. Now, did you watch the Grammys? Well, second half of the Grammys. I, okay, I don't know where I, I don't I don't know what the halftime show on the Grammys were, so I can't <laughs> I miss I miss the I came in just after the halftime show. <laughs> but that was a great show. Just a great show and just great music. I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, this has been fantastic. And uh, I'm sure everyone has heard it by now and everyone has their own opinion, but just, you know, Tracy Chapman just blew me away. I, that, Did anybody that song, have a bad opinion of that performance? I didn't no. see it until afterwards, but. I don't think so. It was just, I was like mesmerized and it was, wow, just fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, and even Joni Mitchell. Yeah. At however old she is, uh, and all the health challenges that she's been through yeah. to do that song. And then right at the end, you know, there's notes that, She's not going to hit, but you can tell she's like aiming for that. And it was, yeah. it was like, wow. Yeah. You know, that it was just phenomenal, just great music. Uh, so I don't think there was, yeah, there was one. There was one that I didn't, I said, ah, I didn't need to have that. But, you know, they've, they've got to make everybody as happy as possible on that. So but I thought it was and a Jay-Z went full Kanye. <laughs> no okay i have to ask you this i have to ask you this now i i am a um i wouldn't call myself a swifty i'm not i'm i i but i i will tell you that if i was able to buy tickets to her toronto concert 
later this year maybe or next year. I can't remember when it's coming. I I would go to the concert because I want to. I, it's it's sort of she has now reached that pinnacle of she's not just a pop star but she's like a, a global icon. Like when people were screaming for the Beatles or Elvis, she's like she's hit that level. So, so what you're saying <laughs> for the, for those listening on the po audio podcast and not on YouTube, Kareem's lights just went out. Um, I'll be right back. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm back. Yeah. So what you're saying is yes, you're sort of the opposite. Where yeah. You know, all the Swifty fans became NFL fans. You're an NFL fan, and you've become a Swifty fan. I'm not even an NFL fan. I'm I'm a default <laughs> NFL fan because because Cosmer watches NFL. I'm just but, kidding. But at the Grammys, yeah, a number of things that she did was like ah, like do you have to? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like we know how great you are. We acknowledge. Yeah. We bow down. Yeah. But to uh, to let everybody know how many Grammys you have. And or then you have a new album coming out. And then to announce you've got a new album, watch for it. Like, yeah, yeah I was I like, ah, oh, that was that's kind of. Yeah, I wasn't. That wasn't overly impressed with that. You know, it's like you know, you're not like take the day off, relax, enjoy. Yeah. And I and and let me let me explain why I said Jay Z went full Kanye. Okay, and and again, I'm making a joke in the reference of Beyonce yes. and that yes. whole thing. Yes. But actually. But it yes. was it was more it was more the way he snubbed ev somebody, if not more than someone, yeah, or some group of people, yeah, for their nominations, basically saying to them, "You didn't deserve to be nominated." And it was just like that's a dick move. Like you're you're getting an award, yeah, by an organization you've just completely thrown yeah. under the bus yeah you're still willing to accept your award and then yeah. you trash talk some of the other musicians yeah that are there and i thought that was really shitty i thought I, I like that's that's where i meant about the kanye not the beyonce at all that was weird but not yeah. the beyonce thing but that was weird yeah odd odd is a better way to put that that was a bit odd yeah. um maybe not maybe it's not yeah. but yeah for him to for him to trash talk other musicians i'm like yeah. Stop. Stop. You don't need to do that. Like humility. Have some fucking humility. Especially, and there are a lot of people that disagree with my view. Yeah, no, fair enough. I recognize that. And that's uh two old men talking about music. One last one, another snub. Yeah. Before we start? Yes. The Juno? Yeah. And we can share talk about this on another date, because I think this deserves some time. Yeah. Dallas Green's songwriting on the new album has gone to a whole other level. He has transcended oh. to like the new album is just almost perfection. It is and it's so personal and yet not oh. a single oh. Interesting. nomination. Interesting. Well, when did the album come out? Last year. Just okay. like, like a maybe, fall egg. Maybe uh, he didn't s submit it for recognition but anyways talking about singer songwriters we have waiting in the green room singer songwriter nominated for traditional album of the year by the canadian folk music awards meredith moon let's uh let's bring her in Craig. hi i'm meredith moon and i'm happy to be on welcome to the music Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Meredith, it's a pleasure having you join us. Um, uh, I just wanted to, to, to say congrats on the album constellations. And and thank you. The one thing the one thing I'd love to, you know, kick it off with is if if you could share sort of some insights of you know your musical influences, your personal experiences that that influenced, you know, your unique sound and 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 you know the album. Um, 
So I, I guess my influences, um, since I was young, I've listened to a lot of, of folk, folk music, singer songwriter music, but, uh, I'm, I'm one of those like Bob Dylan archivist nerds. Um, so that is, uh, my, um, probably my main influence. Um, and then, uh, Appalachian, uh, old time music, um, which I got into, uh, probably about 15 or 16, mm -hmm. um, sort of through the folk revival and kind of, uh, learned about the connections between those songs and the, the trad songs that uh, those people were playing and uh, kept going more and more back in history. Like, you know, Bob Dylan covering Odetta and then Odetta doing all these trad tunes and kind of went down this wormhole of, of old time music, which made me write songs, I guess, in that style or tried to at least. Excellent. How does, uh, I don't know how old you like how old were you when or really like what music were you listening to that informs you about this type of music because uh, i'm just thinking you know in my teens or 20s i'm listening to top 40 music i'm listening to the the, the local rock station um where is meredith moon hanging out and, and what are your influences that really drive you to investigate and you know check out th these types of sounds and music um i don't know i never i wasn't really hanging out with um very many people at all as a teenager um but <laughs> i was very into um old-fashioned sort of things like my favorite thing to do as a teenager was listen to joni mitchell and paint watercolors and just kind of be a nerd with no friends and i'm very happy that i was because um it made me it gave me this love of music and that music in particular where it felt like it was my best friend so oh. um so it was really um it was very formative for me um but uh yeah i mean i guess like i had parents who listened to the that kind of music so i wasn't um yeah i wasn't really exposed to the top 40 sure um but yeah well, speaking of Joni mitchell i don't know if you had a chance to watch her at, at the grammys i saw i saw the a video of it afterward yeah yeah your thoughts i think that everything Joni does is amazing because i'm a huge fan but yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's Fair like enough. a yeah she's she's honestly like this living breathing like encyclopedia of like folk music like she's just this i don't know yeah i i love her and i loved it's, what she did yeah yeah it's it's funny you, you touched on so we we do a, a pre-show where we just riff for a few minutes before uh, you join us and we actually touched on a few things one was we touched on the Joni Mitchell and then you mentioned it's funny you mentioned about Dylan and and covers because I was just talking about I had in the background Rage Against the Machines Renegades where they covered nice. Maggie's farm so it's like anyway just <laughs> come, come full circle um I wanted to ask you this Meredith I, I don't know if this is part of your music or not but I read somewhere that you, I don't know whether you loved it or you had to do it, but hitchhiking. Um, are are you? Is it was that true? Did I read that correctly? That you still love hitchhiking and just sort of discovering where the car would take you? Um, yeah, I did. I used to enjoy that when I was more young and spry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I had my fun from Toronto to the. Yukon to the East Coast and a few times and that's kind of how we got around. Yeah. Are you doing any hitchhiking these days? I'm not. Um I do a lot of car camping. Um I have a pickup truck and um my husband and my dogs uh like to um sleep in there. We just I mean we just did it uh, across uh, we went down to San Diego and back. Mm -hmm. Toronto wow. to San Diego. Yeah. I'm just kind of, yeah. Sleeping at truck stops and having the time of our lives. That's amazing. So, 
Yeah, that's, that's my that's my version of getting close to 30s. You know, I don't hitchhike anymore, but I still sleep in my truck because I like to be comfortable. So, um, yeah. Wow. Very like- <laughs> cool. I know. I know you've you've you know you talk about going across Canada. But you've also toured extensively, you know, to a number of countries globally, and that. And and I wanted to ask you about you know in your travels with within Canada or internationally or to other countries, um, you know what what cultural experiences and you know musical encounters have you found along that time that have had an impression on you? Oh my gosh. Um. Hmm. I want to just say all of it, but um, probably, probably Europe, probably Europe in 2019 and meeting all of these buskers along this strip in the old town in um, Limburg. And I was just walking around with my backpack and, and uh, stopping to meet all of these folks. They were like playing lutes and like all of these instruments that like I'd, yeah, in Canada, it's very rare when somebody um, brings out sort of any Eastern European instruments or or, or a lute. Um, so it was really neat to see the buskers there didn't just play like guitars and fiddles and stuff, but they were playing these like incredible instruments that you don't really see uh, mm. in Canada very often. Um, so that one was really cool. And uh, I think... I think like as far as influence goes like this, I did a tour in Ireland this August and, um, and that was like, uh, very interesting in the way of like, um, folk, folk music there is, it almost like all has like a trad kind of Irish sound to it. And, uh, it it really made me want to incorporate more Celtic music into my music. Um, and uh yeah and all of these like modern folk songs that people had written in like a very celtic style um and it's really nice to see how um different cultures like their folk music is so universal that like different different cultural um influences like will change the sound of modern folk music um and all of these these songs that people are playing will will sound like they're from that part of the world wherever you go. Um, yeah, that's really so it's fun to bring my music there when I can. Nice, that's great. I thought you were going to say Wawa for 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 a second. <laughs> what I do is, love Wawa, but yeah. yeah, it's interesting because Sudbury tends to come up with people that we that Greg and I speak with. Um, first time I've heard Wawa. Or maybe not the first time, but I haven't heard of Wawa like in, in forever. Um, yeah. But is, is that a special place for you or it just happens to be a place where you sometimes get stuck? Um, I mean, there's an old kind of traveler's legend about getting stuck in Wawa. Um, I got stuck there once hitchhiking. And then I also um, I was going through driving in the middle of January to BC like 10 years ago and got stuck in a snowstorm there overnight. And, um, but I, it just like the more time you spend there, the more, uh, you get to know the, the locals. And I actually have some of my best friends live in Wawa. All right. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's, it's a very Ontario town. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. And I, <laughs> I love Ontario. So nice. Um, Meredith, we have a segment uh, on our program called La- Lost Venues. Um, okay. People usually have stories of places that they've played before. Uh, sometimes it's the first place that they've ever played live or it was their first gig. Some people got hilarious stories or horror stories. Um, but it always ends up being a venue that, for one reason or another, does not exist. I'm wondering if you have such a story actually i think i do i think i do yeah i'm trying i'm trying to think well i'll give you two like not they're not like horrific but sure sure they're 
Yeah, but there was this one venue called uh, the Railway Club, I think, in Vancouver. It's since been closed. And uh, they had this thing where, first of all, they they doubled, this is in 2015, they uh, double booked us. And then they were like, you can play. Um, it was like, it's just one big room. And, they, and there was like another band playing. And they're just like, you can play on this other stage on the other end of the room. What? And basically we were both playing at the same time. There wasn't any kind of wall between us and they just made us play um, in the same room. Yeah. So. <laughs> and how big uh, of a room just is this? Kind of swap songs. Um, it was, it was fairly large. The bar was in the middle. Um, it's pretty hectic. And uh, they said like, basically like you can set up in this corner and, you know, so we just kind of played when, where we could, when we could, um, in between songs and whatnot. And anyway, so uh, and then the other horror story. I'm not going to name the venue, but um, <laughs> so there's a venue in Canada somewhere, um, and uh, basically every time that anyone that I know, like a lot of friends, have played there, um, they get bed bugs every single time oh no um just from putting their instrument cases on the floor so uh <laughs> so, so that that has happened before i didn't personally get them because i heard about the stories and i was like okay just don't touch anything just play the show and uh yeah we're a full body i scene. feel almost bad not saying where it is but i know that they don't really function as a live venue anymore so everybody's safe there you go <laughs> there you go and since There's then you've been bar, but... since then you've been sleeping in your car that's yes. <laughs> that's that's why there we go origin story <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. so so Meredith, I know I know you're going to uh, play a song for us one thing i'd like to ask you about before we get to that is um love to know a little more around you know your creative process and your your songwriting process um so for me i'm i don't know i'm not somebody who can always write songs and um i don't think i mean i think i think that like some of the best songwriters that we know of kind of they have dry spells and uh, i know that a lot of friends in this line of work um also, it's easy for us to kind of punish ourselves when we feel like we can't write uh, songs mm -hmm. um, easily or we're going through a dry spell. Um, but something that I've learned to do and something that's like pretty crucial to my writing process is to be able to like juggle creative outlets. Um, and so I'll just kind of like um, paint or I like to I make garden gnomes. Um, is my yes. other uh, creative hobby. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I I like to kind of juggle creative hobbies until the songwriting comes back. Um, so when you're like, always want to be creating stuff, um, it's important to remind yourself that uh, songwriting doesn't always come easily. And uh, yeah, but I in between, I like to try and keep a journal to kind of just keep the writing process going. And uh, I, I have to have the music before I have the lyrics. I have to have some kind of riff that I can imagine a line going to. And then that's kind of how I write, I guess. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. Tell us Meredith, um, you know what's what song what song are you going to play just now i was gonna play i was just gonna play um constellations because okay. it's the title track and i have I actually haven't played it in a couple of months so i would be delighted to play it yeah i know we'd be delighted to have you play it and just uh, to see if i can remember how yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and before yeah. you get started or as you get uh your guitar set up there uh the album Constellation is up for traditional album of the year uh, at this year's Canadian Folk Music Awards. So, congrats on that. Our, our fingers Thank are crossed you. for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Meredith Moon. <laughs> Thank you. Live from North Carolina in a hotel room. <laughs>
Okay. Stars will come to light in the night. Invasive memories like a blinding light. It weighs heavy on my heart. Stitched up wounds ripped apart. Winter's here again We've grown cold Covering the windows Do you song? Oh, I've done it too I'm falling out of love with you I think to when I was young Summer's heavy skies Where old misery dies Travel those rails Surrendering Bruising all our bones Sending Constellations Darkness in North Ontario All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Cool. Thanks for having me on Welcome to the Music. Thanks. So one of the questions I love to ask before we wrap <laughs> things up is what okay. what are you what are you listening to lately? What's in your earbuds, new or old, doesn't matter, that people should be checking out. Oh my gosh. Well, I had a nice phone call with a gentleman in Charleston, West Virginia, because we have a show there next month. And uh, I was talking to him 10 minutes before this interview about possibly renting some fiddles from him um, for the show in March. And he told me about his band called the Parachute Brigade. Hmm. And so uh, I'm actually about to listen to them as soon as I'm done with this interview. But other than that, I've been listening to a lot of Bob Dylan because I do that a lot. But <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Rough and Rowdy Ways, which is his newest. Yeah. 
All right. I saw him live like a couple months ago, and that so yeah. Did I. So I was, so I was there at yeah. the Massey Hall show. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah, nice, <laughs> Meredith. Thank you so much for coming on. If uh, people want to find out more about Meredith, you can check her out on meredithmoon.com uh, and on Instagram. Uh, where she posts photos of amazing animals and the amazing places she visits, and you can find and the gnomes in- and gnomes. gnomes as well. If, you're into, if, you're, yeah. if you like gnomes, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Like yeah, gnomes? thank That's, you. Yeah, I agree. Meredith Moon Music uh, on Instagram, yeah. I think. So, thank yeah. you so much, Meredith. Yes, thank, hey, you. thank you for having me. You're welcome. Take care. Take care. Bye.